welcome to Make Kind Loud, conversations that turn up the volume. This is part two, <laughs> our take two, <laughs> with Evelina Solis. Hello, Evelina. How are you? Hi, Louisa. I'm doing fabulous today. How are you? I am wonderful. Wonderful. I am glad technology is on our side today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we're going to jump in. I'm going to read your bio and then we're going to go from there. Sounds great. All right. It says from the red carpet to death's doorstep in the fight of her life with health challenges and adversities. Edvelina Solis found her true calling of being a voice for the voiceless. Solis is a spokesperson that advocates for lupus and PTSD and loves finding human moments to tell people's truth through professional speaking engagements, crisscrossing the nation, and utilizing various multimedia platforms such as TV, radio, and social media. Evelina is a founder and president of Soul to Soul, a life and wellness coaching, consulting, and inspirational speaking resource. She is also the co-founder of The Power of Women with Kevara Moten, an inspirational workshop series that helps women reignite their passion and refuel their energy, energy to live full and die empty. I love that. So let's talk about that. What, is, what does live full and die empty mean? It means using all your gifts and talents that you've been giving, stepping into your brave and, you know, living out your dreams. You know, there's passions that have been put inside of us that we kind of bury deep down inside. You have to have that childlike mind and that imagination of dreaming to be able to like really go out and do these things and just be fearless. I so love pretty that. much what that means, live full, die empty, make the most of every moment that you have. Yeah. Yeah. I absolutely love your spirit. I love your energy. And the beginning of that said from the red carpet to death's doorstep, doorstep, doorstop, doorstep, <laughs> doorstep. <Yes. laughs> so what does that mean? Well, I started my career right out of college working in TV and radio. So I worked in CBS for CBS television in New York City and Westwood One Radio. So my first job was actually interviewing celebrities. I worked in artist relations. Nice. And I, yeah, I got to do all the things I really dreamed about just as a kid and getting to work award shows and movie premieres and TV release parties and just got to see that at just such a young age. Yeah. And so eventually later on, I was pretty much at the prime of my health and I started having a lot of health issues and have been in the hospital more times than I can count on two hands. Wow. And have struggled with some major health issues beginning in my mid twenties mm -hmm. into up until now. So I've been struggling probably with health issues for 14 or 15 years. And it just really turned my whole world upside down and gave me a whole new perspective on life. And so I've had to like walk through all of that yeah. and, you know, gotten to see so much, but that's pretty much what, um, from the red carpet to death doorstep is about. Wow. So you start your career off, you're fresh out of college, you're insure, you're interviewing these celebrities, you're on the red carpet, you're doing all the things, right? You're, you're, <laughs> yes. living, you're living your best 20 something year old life. Yeah. And then something major happens, something traumatic happens. So what happened? Well, first of all, in my mid 20s, I was working as a freelance reporter and I was working for these different award shows at night and doing some reporting contracted jobs. But during the day, I was working at the University of Miami in Coral Gables, Florida, and I was working in higher education. I was the multicultural student affairs assistant director, and I would put on all of the award shows and things for our students, as well as all the cultural history months yeah. that would happen throughout the year. And when I would help them a lot with leadership workshops and just the things that they would need to know outside of the classroom. And so I was working at the university during the day and I think I was just burning the candle on both ends because I was doing reporting at night or covering CD release parties or these movie premieres and things. And the first time I found out something was wrong was I was coming back from an award show that evening or that afternoon. 
And I just was out of breath trying to go up the stairs. And for someone who was already training for like a half marathon at the time, right. and working right. out consistently, my director, my boss would say, you're really out of shape for someone that <laughs> works out regularly. But I knew at that moment, something was really wrong. So that was like in my mid twenties, I ended up going to the doctor. They thought it wasn't much. They sent me home with some kind of antibiotic, ended up being rushed into the hospital later with a pulmonary, a DVT that became a pulmonary embolism. And like 650,000 people a year get one of those. And a huge percentage die within 30 to 60 minutes wow. of having one because the blood clot shoots up through your leg. And a lot of times, ends up in your heart causing a massive heart attack or into the brain causing a stroke. And so just outliving that and then having to rehab from that. And I thought I was getting better, you know, the next two or three years was rehabilitated from that. But I had came home from that incident hooked up to an oxygen tank in a wheelchair and had to have an at-home healthcare nurse. And, you know, just you're in your mid twenties and you think you're invincible. Right. You right. think you're going to conquer the world. And then all of a sudden, you, you're needing your family's help. Yeah. You know, my fam family rushed from Texas to Miami, ended up thinking they were going to be there for a couple of days, ended up staying there for a few months until I could move back to Texas. And then I got a job at the University of Texas at Austin in the Leadership and Ethics Institute as an advisor and helped to just run that department, help build that from the ground up mm -hmm. and help a leadership studies program there. But I was actually presenting because I had started my own company on the side speaking it was called Soul to Soul. My company is called Soul to Soul. And at that moment, I went to go present at St. Edwards University in right. front of a couple hundred teachers that were there from Spain. And this was in 2009, the July of 2009. And I ended up going in to plug up my USB and I actually sees wow. in front of all these brand new people that are here visiting from another country trying to get advice from us about college students yeah. in Texas. Talk about making a first impression. <laughs> I, I laugh about it now, but it was a very, very scary thing at yeah. that moment. Yeah, I'm sure. My parents happened to be there to support me. They hadn't, they would see what I did at the university, but they didn't get to see a whole lot of what I was doing outside for my company, Soul to Soul. And it was a blessing that they were there, but my dad tried to run up and catch me as this is happening. My sandals flew off of my feet. I bit wow. down on my necklace. Yeah. So I broke my front left tooth. But I seized like the entire time. It wasn't just like a small seizure. I seized all the way as I was rushed to St. David South in Austin. Ended up um, in there for the next 25 days. Wow. And I seized and then I flatlined. I yeah. seized for a really long time again. I flatlined. I seized again and flatlined one more time. And at this point, they didn't ever think I was going to. They may, thought maybe I would stay. Doctors thought that I was going to stay maybe in a vegetative state. Right. And just we're trying to be realistic with my parents. And I'm so thankful to have such supportive family and friends that were by my side praying the entire time yeah. and just there to provide every need. But what ended up happening is when I woke up, the doctors told me that I had systemic lupus, SLE lupus, <laughs> and just trying to figure out what that looked like and what that was. And then... Not only did I have that, but I reverted back to a six month old. Wow. So I couldn't eat, yeah. talk, walk. I didn't recognize anybody. I didn't know my name. I didn't know the date. Just so many things I had to learn. Yeah. And then they also told me, you'll be going through six months of chemotherapy because it became lupus cerebritis where it attacked my brain. And that's why I was seizing. Gotcha. Wow. That's like, <laughs> that's a lot in like a span <laughs> yeah. of three or four years. Yes, that exactly. A lot. So you were in the hospital for 25 days. You learned how to talk again. You learned how to walk again. You learned all of these skills that you had as a 20 yeah. something year old. Um, and then yeah. they went away. Um, what lessons did you learn from, from that experience? I did want to mention that my recuperation did take quite a while. Um, this yeah. happened in July 2009, and it was till about the end of 2010 until I was feeling a little bit more myself. Yeah, yeah. There's still times that I was like, I think this thing really affected my brain long term <laughs> with memory and you know just finding the right words sometimes. But I was just really grateful because I pleaded with God on the side of my bed, and I just said, if it's my time, take me now because that's how horrible I was feeling. Wow. But I was like, if not, you're gonna have to show up, show out, and create this miracle through me because 
I know you put in my heart a long time ago that you wanted me to be a messenger. Right. You wanted me to be able to tell stories and tell this story, your story, and, you know, just tell people about all the amazing things that you do in people's lives every day. And so I was like, you're going to have to do this for me. And so just getting to be a part of that and see that, you know, something that I'm super grateful for. And what is taught me, is that what is your question? Yeah. What, what, it, what lessons have you learned? I've learned so much. Life <laughs> can teach so many things. Yeah. Lupus can teach you so many things. I've learned that uh, to cherish every single moment with any yeah. person that you have, relationships really, you know, are what this life is about, building community, being in community with people you won't take possessions with you you know you have to enjoy and cherish what you have now as yeah. I talked about living full and dying empty using everything that you've been given to be able to serve others is just so important and that's something that has um really stayed with me throughout this and also just to never waste a heartbeat I know trainer yeah. Dane we both know trainer Dane and that's one of his favorite sayings and I would always say you know if you can put your hand over your heart and you can still feel your heart beating and you're taking a breath today then you still have purpose and I just want to remind people of that every single day yeah. and so that's something that that lupus has taught me and this whole crazy <laughs> journey of life that I have uh, been through but it's it's been a beautiful thing and I actually thank God you know for for it because there is a lot of people that still have not figured that out and I was right. able to see that at such a young age yeah, that was going to be my next question because a lot of um, some people, I'm not going to say a lot, but some people may have taken that taken that as um, something to knock them knock them down and not get back up again. What made you get back up? What made you decide that this is something that I'm going to use as a platform to help people? So, what was that process like? It was. Every day, I had to take it every by every hour, honestly, yeah. because, you know, you have your good days and your bad days. But just knowing that my family was by my bedside. And at this time, you know, I wasn't married and I didn't have a child. So really just fighting for each and six, every single day and knowing if I'm still alive, if I'm still breathing, then I know God has a purpose for me. And he's going to do something with this. You know, he turns out all things out for our, our good. Yeah. And it's hard to believe that sometimes, you know, especially if your faith is wavering, but this was also a time where my faith was truly tested and just getting to, um, every day, you know, just be in prayer and, and just ask the Lord what it was that he wanted from me, you know, really strengthen me. And I could only do it relying on his strength, not on my own. Yeah. And, um, I've just taken away, honestly, so, so much. I mean, we could be here all day, <laughs> but I, I, I've, Lupus has just been such a great um, teacher, I guess you yeah. could say. And yeah. I always say I may have lupus, but lupus doesn't have me. I love that. I love that. It's not, it doesn't <laughs> have you. It's not going to keep you down for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So just, you know, having my family by my bedside and just knowing God was on my side really is what kept me going every single day. Right. And so you do these workshops where you help people. Like, what do you tell people who come in and they're, they may be a little bit broken? I'm going to put it in quotation marks. Yeah. A little bit yeah. broken. Um, how do you help them and what do you tell them? You know, a lot of times I had all these different workshops laid out that I've done for the universities and through high schools and, you know, yeah. nonprofits and corporations. And I get asked the exact same thing over and over. It's not to do those workshops anymore. It's to come in and tell my story. Nice. And just, you know, they want to find out how the optimism plus the resilience and how I turned a scary mess into a powerful message. And that is really what I end up focusing on. And when I go into these workshops, no matter what obstacle people are overcoming, yeah. Yeah. even though you can't see it while you're walking through it, the, you know, concentrating on what it is at the end of what you would like to see. And then, you know, just being a prayer about it too. Because, you know, if it's not in God's will, it's not going to happen. Right, right, right. <laughs> and no <matter> uh, <laughs> yeah, no matter what, no matter what you do, it's out of your control. And, you know, control the things that you can and focus on that and work on the things that you can do and the things that you do well and the things that you don't do well, you know, maybe that's not in your gifting. And if it is, and it's just something you're being lazy about on it, you know, maybe you need to work on that and take more time to do those types of things. I love that. I love that. 
So what, what is your big passion in the world? Like, what do you want to empty yourself of so that you can die empty? <laughs> I have so many more things I would like to accomplish and do. I love TV and radio. That's one of my first loves, you know, and writing. And so I would love to do more TV and radio. I use Facebook Live quite a bit to talk to my audience. And now with what we're going through, right, right. all of my past experience has equipped me to be able to use all of this new technology to be able to reach a larger, larger audience. And um, I want to continue to do that as well as these workshops. I was mentioning on Friday when we had technical issues that I had just gotten off the phone with Washington State University. Yeah. And I was supposed to be able to travel out there, but obviously we all know nobody's traveling right now. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got to come up with really creative ways to be able to reach these students. And so I'll be doing some Zoom keynotes and Zoom workshops. Love so I that. see that in my future. Because, you know, maybe travel is not always going to be uh, accessible or, you know, with my health situation, I might not be able to do it as much in the future. So using technology to help me with that and more writing, hopefully coming out with a book in the near future and maybe even having a movie come from the book. Really, the possibilities are endless. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. And your story is definitely um, movie worthy. I mean, just the mm -hmm. um, the fight, the resilience, the mm -hmm. I mean, the uh, dramatic thing <laughs> that you went through and how you bounced back. Like, it's definitely a movie. <laughs> yeah. One of my friends would be like, oh, when's that Lifetime movie coming out? Right. I was like, oh, my life is that dramatic, huh? <laughs> it sure is. Yeah, but you're to tell the story though, which is beautiful. Yeah, thank you. But I just I see God using it, you know, for his honor and glory and you know, wherever it is, maybe international stages one day. But honestly, just reaching one person and changing one life. And we talked about this ripple effect in the last broadcast, yeah, that had technical issues. But really that means more to me than anything. If I can just reach one person and affect one life, then I know I've done what God has asked me to do. And that's what, like you said, we did talk about that. That's that's how we change the world is one person at a time. And, you know, people do think that changing the world is such a big thing because there's, you know, when you think of 7 billion people, that's a lot. However, if you impact one person and that person impacts one person and keeps going, ultimately we will change the world but we've got to just focus on being positive lights in the world. Yes. And I love right now, there is so many good like movies and books and things coming out with that kind of theme behind it. You know, we have like the Overcomer movie that's came out and then the Breakthrough movie, which is on these true stories, inspirational stories and how this one person affected so many people's lives. Right. And they're just coming out and everybody's wanting to see movies that families can see together that are good because there's just so much junk out in our world. So if we can continue to be a, a positive light to others and inspire them, then I think we're doing what we should be doing while we're here. Yeah. And I think um, the state of the world right now, although it's inconvenient and it is scary and we're uncertain right now, the beautiful thing about humans is that humanity is stepping up and yes. we're everyone from every corner of the world is showing how it can be if we all chose to be kind and positive and loving. And the outpouring of that in this situation makes it so beautiful and, and able to cope through. Yes, and you are doing a fabulous job of that. I want oh. you to know. <laughs> You're my kindred spirit over there. I love what Make Kind Loud is about and, you know, what you do and your life mission and purpose. And I also want to say that video that you put together with all of us from the 15 different states and five countries, that had an impact on so many people. And I just want to say thank you for allowing us to be a part of that project. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you for being a part of it. And I mean, I'm still floating. <laughs> because yeah. It was so much fun to put together. And um, to see it all come together in this video, this beautiful video um, really made my heart happy. And so thank you for being a part of that. 
with your daughter. Let's talk about your daughter, by the way. She's amazing. <laughs> oh, thank Great. you. I love her. So tell me about Hope. Thank you. Yes. So for those of you that might not understand what we're talking about, Louisa put together this video. It's with music and words of um, love, sweet love, right? What the world needs now. Yeah. What, what, what the world needs now, love, sweet love. And so my daughter was just like, mom, I'm the singer of the family. And I was like, okay, your time to shine, girl. So she actually got to be a part of that project. And I was just cheering her on the whole time. But she just is another miracle in this process. I mean, you know, when we talk about the Lifetime movie or, you know, this big movie being made one day, she definitely is a crucial part of that just because after all the trauma that my body went through, they had told me I would never be able to conceive a child. And the Lord obviously had a different plan. And I didn't actually know I was pregnant with her until two trimester, until my second trimester. Yeah. And uh, talk about a very scary time because I had been on such aggressive medication right. that would cause birth defects. And it was something that I had just accepted knowing that God, you know, already knew, he already knew what he was going to do. Yeah. So when I found out I was pregnant, it just really threw me for a loop and turned my world upside down in a good way eventually. But at the time I was very career oriented, still doing a lot of speaking around the country and everything just halted. It came to a huge stop. And I just had to like refigure out what is this going to look like? Oh my goodness. And then um, just finding out even when she was born that she had like a small hole in her heart. And then she had um, one less rib, one extra lumbar vertebrae and a short left arm. Even when she came out, they did these measurements and she went through all of these specialists yeah. and started occupational therapy within a couple of months of being born and all the way until she was 18 months old. And I already knew that her life was going to be a story that she would eventually be able to tell. Mm -hmm. And my dream was that her and I would be able to go on the road someday, which is so funny that she loves all of this. I wouldn't be surprised if she shows up in this video. <laughs> but. Um, God gave me this vision of just, you know, by the grace of God, that he was going to bring us hope. And so her name is Hope Grace because of that. And Hope graduated her program of occupational therapy at 18 months. And all of the specialists actually cleared her wow. on her path to trying to be a healthier kid. Yeah. And now she plays sports, she sings, she dances, and she's excelling in school. And I just really couldn't have asked for, a, you know, a better miracle like in my life. Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. That is so beautiful. And she also has a beautiful spirit. It just shines through. So <laughs> Thank you. Guys to go on the road together and have. <laughs> yeah. She's so actually been a great together. person. Yeah. She's gone through a couple of workshops with me and she'll pass out materials and I'll ask her a few questions. And I'm just trying to help her learn at a young age to overcome stage fright and really just about being the messenger for the Lord. Yeah. Well, it's working for sure. Because she's <laughs> The bright Thank light you. indeed. And so, I mean, your story is magnificent. And what what makes it even more magnificent is that you're using it to help other people in the world. Thank you. Really because you know, people survive stuff and then sometimes they just keep it to themselves. But I think mm -hmm. we are here. Well, I know we are here to um, help each other because we belong to each other. And that's exactly what you're doing um, with your platform and with everything that you've gone through in your life, using that to help other people is amazing. Oh, thank you so much. I do feel like everyone has a story and it's just like pulling that out of them because there is someone out there that needs to hear the story so that it can be their survival guide to be able to get through life. Yeah. If we all need, we all need something, right? We all, yes. need, and if we can recognize that in someone else, and that helps us get over our hurdle, so that we can help someone else. I mean, that's that's what it's all about. And I, I truly believe that you were brought through all of that so that you can do exactly what you're doing with your life right now. Yes, thank you. We are talking about advocating for lupus and PTSD. And I just truly feel called to doing that just because of what I've walked through in my life. You know, I was able to advocate locally and nationally for the Lupus Foundation of America and also just dealing with PTSD, um, you know, having someone in my household that um, went through war and yeah. suffered through 
those types of things and just learning what secondary PTSD look like and, and how to help others to be able to survive through that. And those aren't easy things to talk about. You know, it's right. not easy being yeah, vulnerable yeah. and open and, you know, being so transparent. But I feel like many are called, but few are chosen. And, you know, the Lord has chosen me. And I know what I need to do on my end is just to speak truth and to, to help others and to serve them. That is beautiful. Well, you keep doing exactly what you're doing and you keep shining your light because the world needs you. you for sure. So thank you so much for that. Thank you. <laughs> I believe everyone is created for a purpose and on purpose. And you are also living out yours. Oh, thank you. Well, listen, we can talk all day because you we just sure could. <laughs> <laughs> and I love my time with you. <laughs> and, and I with you. <laughs> um, so this has been Make Kind Loud. I just want to thank Evelina Solis for spending time with us and telling her story and how she's living her life out loud and helping people and being that bright beacon. Because if you have a heartbeat, you have a purpose. So thank you again, Evelina. I really appreciate it. I did want to mention that um, I wanted to give shout outs to the two people that did end up publishing my story yeah. in the last uh, 11 years. I wanted to let people know there is a book called Aim High, Extraordinary Stories of Hispanic and Latina Women by Laura Contreras Rowe. So thank you to her for also just shining the light on 33 women's lives and choosing my story. And also Kendra Smiley uh, had published a book called Live Free. And she also covered my story in that book. And that's what's inspired me to try to write my own story in the future. I love that. We'll put the um, titles of the books in the comments so that people can yes. go check those out. So that's awesome. Tell us the name of the titles of the books one more time. It's Aim High, Extraordinary Stories of Hispanic and Latina Women is the first book by Laura Contreras Rowe. And the second book is Live Free by Kendra Smiley. Perfect. Yeah, so we'll put that in the And they can find out more at evelinasolis.com. Perfect. evelinasolis.com. Go check it out. The two books that uh, tell her story, but she's also going to write her own book. And we're going to uh -huh. have a movie <laughs> coming soon. I feel it in my bones. I know this is going to happen. <laughs> Because the world, it's in God's will. <laughs> exactly. The world needs to hear your story and you just keep living your truth out loud and you just keep being that beacon of light. And thank you so much again. It's great talking to you, Louisa. You too. This has been Make Kind Loud, conversations that turn up the volume. We will talk to you guys next week. Have a good one. Bye-bye.